alrighty. So, what's up everybody? This crazy contraption right here is a simple test for the ferro fluid. I've got this pipe 3 8 tube going through the center of my primary and I've got all these different random coils on side this tube okay and I'm gonna fill this up cap it off with ferro fluid alright here's what I'm using thanks to Chris for allowing this to even be in my hands your blessing buddy and we're gonna do some tests with pulse fire here got pulse fire uh, set up on the screen you can see what it looks like um, pulse fire is ingenious thank you will you're a blessing Everyone over here in the chat room, you guys are all blessings. Couldn't be doing this stuff without all your support. So, um, primaries, rewrap those as you saw in the earlier video. And, yeah, so I'm going to attempt to put some ferro fluid in here. I've got this syringe, thanks to my fellow friends at the live show over here. Um, I'm going to try that. Seems like a lot of you trying to pour it into this little hole. All right everyone so I'm going to attempt not to make a giant mess or waste anything and I'm gonna fill this temporary EPG type device up with ferro fluid Alrighty, I officially have filled up this thing. I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's uh, <clears throat> it looks really similar to the very first EPG I built, where I just stacked a whole bunch of random coils on there. I've got all sorts of stuff here just for fun. Uh, 24 volt DC solenoid coil, uh, half of a transformer, a couple different windings on there. Uh, kind of a special starship coil. I got a star chalice coil. I got a regular uh, starship coil with the double winding that I made. Two round regular coils. Uh, a double twisted pair um, aluminum and copper wire starship coil. A three point rodent coil. Standard heavier gauge solenoid coil. Um, another lighter gauge solenoid coil and one more bigger solenoid coil 24 volt so that's what I got the, the primaries here so I'm gonna do some playing around and then we'll see what happens after that alright uh, okay so Mr. Ramsnick wanted me to put this in the video Nick R so what I've done is I've taken a little bitty neo magnet I think these were like a sixteenth or something, or no, they look like eighth. Stuck one on the pipe, one sitting here. Turn these coils on, and the magnetic field of those coils is strong enough to move these magnets around. And depending on the frequency which I set this at by this potentiometer, I can make it slow down or speed up its fluctuation. See, like this one, I can feel this. I can feel this one in my hand. So, crazy. <clears throat> but that's just from the magnetic field, but you can see this one flickering. But I don't think it's I don't think it's the ferrule fluid that's doing it. I think it's the 
I think it's just a magnetic field around it. So there you go. To the Wow. Alright. So here's what I've got. I've got the scope set up. Right now I'm pulsing every one of these coils in at once. Alright, except I got it turned up really high so you can't really even see it flashing. And yeah, I lost my scope. I've got my scope across one of these coils. If I can get it on here. Ah. Come on. There we go. Alright, so I've got my scope set up across this particular coil. And I've, I'm going to turn one of these on at a time and show you what the scope shot looks like. So, the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. Now, my scope is set at one volt per division. And so that looks like one and a half volts here and there. Now, the actual voltage measured across this is not really that high, but on the scope shot, you can see it. Now, if I adjust my frequency, you'll see that the scope also agrees with that frequency change. So, I don't know if some of that's magnetic coupling between the two coils here, or, or what, but, uh, yeah. Interesting collection of coils I got going on there. So anyway, I want to show you that real quick, um, and we'll see what the next test brings. This guy right here. Yep, if it goes all over the place, it was not my idea. Yep, that's it's his fault already. So it's on film. I'm going to try to pump some ferrofluid out of here with this magnetic coil. And uh, probably make a mess, so it shall be interesting. Alright, so really quickly before I move on to the ferrofluid explosion that's probably going to happen. I wanted to hook up this meter and show you... Um, show you what it what was outputting of this exact same coil that I got the scope hooked up to. So if I run back down the number of coils I have on, you can see that they correspond with the output of my scope. So we've got no coils, zero volts, first coil, second coil, third coil, fourth coil, fifth coil, sixth coil. Um, now actually what I want to tell you really quickly is the fact that this is not permanently magnetized material. Ferrofluid is not permanently magnetized. So basically what I'm telling you is this may not work at all with ferrofluid because the medium that's supposed to be inside the APG is supposed to be a permanently magnetized material. Which makes sense. That makes this a magnetic device, not a some sort of other crazy device. It's a magnetic device. So if the ferrofluid is not permanently magnetized, it's not going to circulate in here exactly like you're thinking. It's just going to kind of oscillate right here in this area, probably. So what I'm going to do is crack an end. Uh, Nick One UK decided that it would be a good idea to crack one end and see if we can pump ferrofluid out of it. So that's what we're going to try. Sequentially pulsing these to try to pump ferrofluid out of here. So we'll see what happens. Alright. So it seems that some of the live audience members are asking me if this this particular coil here is very hot. And they're asking me if the ferrofluid's warm. And that would indicate movement through the coil. And the ferrofluid over here just doesn't feel feel that warm. It just doesn't. This just this feels much warmer over here. So I'm gonna pop the end off, um, and we're gonna see if we can get some output here. So this will be this is gonna be a little tricky. 
probably extremely messy. What we do for the name of science. messy stuff. Okay, well, there goes nothing. <laughs> Too many things to hold. Okay, here we go. Ready, on. So, not pumping like you would expect, which actually makes sense to me because of how this reacts. I get to stop dripping. So, not pumping, which is okay with me. I, I wouldn't actually expect it to. Let me turn up the frequency. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect this up to pump like you would think it would because of the, the consistency and the fluid medium of what it really is. Seems like it has some sort of an effect on it, though. But it's not like pumping like you would imagine a pump to pump. Now I'm going to attempt to not get everything covered with this stuff. Hey. Yummy. I'll be back. Well, I've officially got ferrofluid completely covering my hands. And um, it's in this cup got the hose off here it's drying out quite nicely this stuff does kind of evaporate so it, 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 it tends to dry and uh, somehow I did not get any on my really nice white shirt that I should have changed before I started good job for me so now um, I'm going to put this stuff away yeah I mean successful test uh, it told me some things and you know wasn't really sure about the ferrofluid but it is a magnetic fluid but we have to remember it's got to be a permanently magnetized fluid that's part of the key so hydrogen and oxygen can be temporarily magnetically polarized yes it can um, Alex Petty has proven that if you run ox oxygen and hydrogen through an EPG type device, you can get it to function. So I'll be pushing towards those results and seeing what happens. Um, so that's today. Uh, it's the 22nd of the first month of the 12th year in the 2000th time. Doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway, peace out, peace and love. Thank you. Have a good day. Let's continue on.